Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. I'm very happy to be here uh, to be part of the uh, lecture series of Circa Agriculture and Development um, the, in, in this uh, very nice building of Circa. And I'm glad to talk on agroecology for sustainable agriculture and environment towards food security. No, ako po ay ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa ating uh, uh, circa director Dr. Hill C. Sagikit for inviting me. And balakpakan po natin siya. And of course, uh, I wish to acknowledge our present present chancellor of UPLB, Dr. Fernando Sanchez Jr. And our former UPLB chancellor, Dr. Luis Ray Velasco. And uh, UPLB Foundation Inc. Executive Director, Dr. Silio Arboleda. And uh, PICARD Executive Director, Dr. Patricio Failon. And all the management and staff of CIRCA, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. When they asked me to talk at CIRCA, I thought that what ako magsasalita dito is sila naman yung magaling sa topic. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to visit Circa and learn more about it because they were our resource person during our investigation with regards to the smuggling of rice. And I thought that it will be good that I'm familiar with all the organizations who are working for uh, agriculture and rural development because they will be able to help us in the Senate to craft legislation and to make investigation so that we can uh, help in the development of agriculture, which is very important to the Philippines being uh, an agricultural country and where uh, so many people are directly or, in the, directly or indirectly dependent on agriculture. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, the topic of my talk is agroecology for safe, sustainable agriculture and environment towards food security. World experts on agriculture and food have recently been emphasizing on the importance of agroecology. It has been a topic and subject of various symposiums, seminars, researchers, publications, and speeches. I myself delivered a privileged in the Senate about it recently, on October 22 in particular, and it says agroecology is an idea or concept whose time for adoption and implementation worldwide has come or long overdue. On September 18 and 19, an international symposium on agroecology for food security and nutrition was held facilitated by the Food and Agricultural Organization, Agriculture Organization, at its headquarters in Rome. It also raised awareness about agroecology. Discussions focused on the numerous economic, environmental, and social aspects agroecology encompasses. Agroecological concepts and practices contribute to the three main goals of the Food and Agriculture Organization. First, for eradicating hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition. Second, eliminating poverty and the driving forward of economic and social progress for all. And third, sustainable management and utilization of natural resources including land, water, air, and climate for the benefit of present and future generations. <clears throat> Goals that the FAO believes will be realized and met with the help of agroecology. And as chairperson of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food, I agree with FAO. We need to learn more about agroecology so that we can assess its benefits and promote its adoption and active implementation here in the agricultural country of ours, the Philippines. So what is agroecology? <clears throat> agroecology uses ecological concepts and principles to design and manage sustainable agroecosystems, offering benefits for productivity, food security, environmental sustainability, and important ecosystem services such as climate change, mitigation. Just yesterday, 
a new study was reported in the news and it shows the Philippines was the number one country affected by the climate change in 2013. The report by German think tank German Watch indicates the Philippines, Cambodia, and India suffered most from the effects of climate change last year. They cited the massive damage brought about by Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda as an important case in point in the Global Climate Risk Index. It was unveiled at the ongoing United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in Peru. Tapos kayo po ay nag pa tayo ng uh, Yolanda-like typhoon in the Philippines and we do not know what will happen, happen afterwards. What can agroecology offer? First and foremost, agroecology provides a number of environment-related benefits since it aims for environmental sustainability. And if only for those benefits, agroecology is indeed very timely as an alternative to conventional farming. Taking into consideration that the country now experiences extreme weather disturbances such as strong typhoons, drought, El Nino, La Nina, and other environmental risks. Thus, we need different approaches such as agroecology. FAO Director General Jose Graciano da Silva said, a paradigm shift in agriculture is needed. He said that the main challenge facing world farming is to lower the use of agricultural inputs, especially water and chemicals, as well as to make food production viable in the long term. He cited that agroecology is really farming in a more sustainable way. Sustainability is the key. His points were seconded by the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, Professor Hilal Elver, who cited that recent scientific researches increasingly prove how agroecology offers environmentally sustainable methods that meet the rapidly growing demand for food. Based on estimate, there is a need to increase food production by over 60% to meet the expected demand from a population of over 9 billion in 2050. Ensuring food security is another factor that is of foremost consideration. And according to the FAO, only small farmers and agroecology can feed the world. It cites that 70% of the food consumed globally comes from small farmers come from small farmers. Based on official statistics, 1.5 billion of people globally are estimated to be involved in family farming and over 500 million small farms worldwide. Ang siguridad ng pagkain ng ating bansa at ng buong mundo ay nakasalalay sa maliliit ng mga magsasaka. In fact, 2014 has been designated by the United Nations as the International Year of Family Farming. Family farmers is a crucial part of our efforts to reach sustainable food security. As such, we need to develop and implement specific policies, program, and strategy. It is noteworthy that the closing ceremony of the International Year of Family Farming was done in Manila, in Dositani, a week ago. That is very important because they opened their celebration in New York City and they did the closing ceremonies in Manila. In the process of sustainability, sustainably increasing production, addressing climate change, and building resilience, agroecology is providing benefits to small and family farmers in particular. Actually, at some extent, small-scale and family farmers have been practicing agroecology without them knowing about the science and the ecology of it. But now, with increased interest and attention to agroecology, they are more aware, and thousands more are practicing it, and many are even partnering with scientists. Agroecology is also seen to slow the trend towards increasing urbanization which is placing stress 
on public services in urban areas where increasing concentration of population is observed. For instance, after Typhoon Yolanda, maraming mga tao mula sa affected areas ang lumipat sa urban areas including Metro Manila. Pagka nagkaroon ng development sa rural areas, may iiwasan ang urban migration. Agroecology would contribute to rural development. The resulting higher income in the rural areas would contribute to the growth of other sectors of the economy in the countryside. Like po sa amin sa Las Piñas, pagkatapos ng Typhoon Yolanda, meron po kaming isang lugar doon na may 10,000 families na dati po yung eh, relocation area na naging legitimate na taga Las Piñas. Alam niyo ba, pagkatapos ng Yolanda, siguro yung mga mag-anak nila sa Yolanda stricken areas went home to them. Yung aming pong uh, public school na dati ay, kasi sa Metro Manila, yan po ang practice. Uh, five days, half day. Kasi two sessions. May hapon, may umaga. Nung ako po ay nag-aaral sa public school, nung maligit kami, nung maligit ako, elementary, it's uh, uh, five days, whole day. Ngayon po sa Metro Manila, five days, half day. E nung po ako nag-aaral, hindi na nga ako nakinig ng uh, five days, whole day. Wala akong masyado natutunan. E di lalo na yung five days, half day. Tapos nung mag pa, naging five days, ano, uh, half day, three days. Nung so, tinyo, pinapasok yung isang, ano, isang uh, uh, session, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, half day. Tapos sa hapon, half day. Two sessions, three days. Tapos pinapasok na ng Thursday, Friday, Saturday, half day ulit. Di yung lalong wala na natutunan yung mga estudyante. And uh, by that time, nung malaman ko yun, nag-complain na ako kay Secretary Luistro. Eh kasi ano pa matitira sa, pa kayo nag-KK pa yun? Plus 12 kung uh, five days, half day. Three days, half day na kayo dito. I mean, parang hindi, hindi logical, di ba? So, nag-complain na ako para at least alam niya yung nangyayari sa mga public schools sa Metro Manila. And so, that is one sign of urbanization. Lahat pumupunta na sa Metro Manila. Ngayon po sa Metro Manila, uh, pag uh, umula ng konti, eh, baha na kami lang. Hindi naman baha, parang nag-traffic na lahat. Hindi pa bumabaha, nagka-traffic na. And uh, we're so afraid now to go out because uh, you will spend all your time traveling. Yeah. A, a typical, I was interviewing a typical employee in Fort Bonifacio of my pamangkin. And they're from Cavite. One is from Cavite and one is from San Mateo Rizal. And uh, four hours daw sila going to Makati, four hours going to Cavite. The other one is four hours going to San Mateo, four hours going to uh, uh, going to Makati. Sabi ko, e pag eight hours in sp uh, spend ko for traveling, e magtatanim na lang ako sa rural areas kasi ano ba namang klaseng buhay na eight hours working, eight hours traveling, about six hours to sleep, yun na lang ang buhay mo every day. So that is bad and so we're talking about uh, uh, rural development para maiwasan natin yung that kind of urbanization. Scientists also support agroecology. It is after all an interdisciplinary science that derives insights from ecologists and agronomists as well as social scientists. In fact, about 70 scientists and scholars of sustainable agriculture and food systems sent an open letter to the food to FAO praising the UN organization for convening an international symposium on agroecology for food and nutrition security. Given the intensifying challenge posed by continued food insecurity, rural poverty, climate change, drought, and water scarcity, the scientists call for a solid commitment to agroecology from the international community. They are calling for a launch of a UN system-wide initiative on agroecology as the central strategy for addressing climate change. The initiative, they said, could form one of the pillars of the future work of the Committee on World Food Security. Most of the experts believe that agroecology is best suited for small-scale and family farmers. 
And while I cited earlier, they have been practicing even before. Practicing it even before. There is a need to provide adequate incentives and technical assistance to support small-scale small farmers as well as micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in the creation of local agroecological business models that can make appropriate inputs and technologies available to communities. Agroecology will also have an effect on solving malnutrition, which is still prevalent in our country. The status of micronutrient malnutrition in our country is a cause for concern. To quote a FAO report, iron deficiency disorder or anemia is the most alarming of the micronutrient deficiencies affecting a considerable proportion of infants, 57%, pregnant women, 51%, lactating women, 46%, and older male persons, 50%, uh, uh, 49%. And the vitamin A status of the country is considered severe subclinical deficiency also. Moreover, the incidence of underweight, wasting, and stunting, which was prevalent mostly among Filipino children before, has now become prevalent among Filipino adolescents and adults as well. According to FAO, about 4 million or 32% of the preschool population were found to be underweight for age 3 million or 3 million or 20% adolescents and 5 million or 13% adults, including older persons, were found to be underweight and chrono, chrono, chronically energent deficient, energy deficient. In another side of the scale, obesity has increased in prevalence among Filipinos too. Underweight, stunting, and obesity are the root causes of diseases, increases health risk, and reduces life expectancy. Potentially fatal conditions associated with obesity include type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, cancers, and gallbladder disease. Moreover, FAO said the cumulative cause of all non-communicable diseases for which obesity is a leading risk factor were estimated to be about $1.4 trillion in 2010. And its toll on the economy is just as alarming. FAO pegged at $3.5 trillion per year, dollars per year globally the economic cost of malnutrition due to lost productivity and direct health care costs. Although hunger statistics are still rising worldwide, it is not anymore merely about feeding or getting fed, but to have the means to grow sufficient nutritionally and culturally accepted food. I personally advocate best vegetable gardening in both urban and rural areas. Greenpeace Philippines calls it ecological agriculture. It supports biodiversity in farms and follows a holistic approach to easing malnutrition and nutrients deficiency, especially among pregnant women and children. It has been providing Filipinos with diverse, safe, and healthy sources of food. During the World Food Day recently, I pledge support to their initiatives to promote ecological agriculture because it empowers us to plant, grow, and harvest our own food that is clean, grown naturally, and free from synthetic pesticides and fertilizers. I have been an active advocate for urban gardening using compost from household waste as fertilizers. In fact, uh, next week po, kami po ng uh, BIFAR will inaugurate our new model of urban uh, farm in Las Piñas. And it's a combination of aquaculture and organic farming. And we will be practicing agroecology as in water po ay uh, iikot lang tapos uh, yung aming pakakain sa isda would come from the uh, waste of our garden 
and then yung water po na pupunta sa garden, magkagaling din doon sa pond where the uh, plants, where the fishes are. So hopefully, we will be successful. We will not stop until we are successful but because we are really decided in promoting urban uh, agriculture in the urban areas. Para pag halimbawa, biglang nagka-problema yung ating mga rural areas due to climate change, at least may kakainin pa yung mga tao sa urban areas. Bukod sa nakakasira na mga <clears throat> ng fertility of quality of agricultural soil at iba pang harmful effects nito sa environment, alam naman natin na ang synthetic or inorganic pesticides at fertilizer ay mahal at nagpapaliit ng income ng mga farmers. Ako mismo ay mayroong organic fertilizer uh, composting uh, enterprise sa aking home city of Las Piñas. I'm glad to say that uh, we practice both the rotary composting and vermicomposting and we build composting centers in all our barangays to convert kitchen and garden waste into organic fertilizer that we distribute for free to farmers and vegetable gardeners in our neighboring provinces of Laguna, Cavite, Batangas, Quezon, and uh, Ulacan. At uh, ito din po ay pinopromote ko all over the Philippines. I'm trying to build composting facilities in every uh, big market in all the cities and towns in the Philippines. Uh, pag po yung city or town merong Camellia Homes, pinababayaran ko po sa Camellia Homes yung composting facility. Pag wala pong Camellia Homes, pinababayaran ko sa DEA. <laughs> so, wala po kasi kami pitaf. So, nakahanap na po ako ng uh, formula para at least uh, I will be able to build composting facilities in all the uh, viable markets in all the towns and cities in the Philippines. And hopefully, pag nakaproduce sila ng organic fertilizer dito, may pamimigay nila dun sa farmers nila dun sa kanilang particular city. So, we will be helping in promoting agroecology and organic agriculture. Ang composting is in line with the National Organic Agriculture Program. It envisions the organic agriculture sector contributing to the overall agriculture growth and development of the country in terms of sustainability, competitiveness, and food security, where at least 5% of Philippine agricultural farm will be converted into organic by 2016. Sana maging successful ang DA dito sa uh, target. Sa pamamagitan ng vegetable gardening, magkakaroon ng easy access sa masustansya pagkain ng mga Pilipino at maipsan lalo ang malnutrition. Batay sa 2008 Food Consumption Survey of the Food and Nutrition Research Institute, ang mga Pilipino ay pakonti ng pakonti ang kinakain na gulay sa loob ng isang araw. Itong nakaraang tatlong dekada. Mula sa 145 grams ng gulay sa isang araw noong year 1978, ang ating vegetable consumption ay bumaba sa 110 grams na lamang noong 2008. Ang Department of Health mismo ay pinopromote ang vegetable gardening sa mga Filipino sa pamamagitan sa pagtatanim ng mga gulay sa ating bakuran, magkaroon tayo ng sariling supply ng gulay, at magkaroon din ng pagkakataon na kumita ang gula sa mga ito. There are numerous challenges that hinder the extension of policy support to help small-scale producers improve soil and water conditions to increase farm outputs, achieve local food security, and long-term ecosystem sustainability. Some of the identified sets of policy support that are recommended are agricultural policies that incentivize recycling of biomass within the agro-ecosystem, uh, which is the use of local sources and renewable energy sources, as well as composting and waste recycling reduce the reliance on external outputs, thus diminishing pressure on the natural resources. This agroecological practice should be rewarded with incentives. Agriculture, number two, agriculture investment and extension targeted specifically to help small-scale producers 
producers improve soil and water conditions through agroecological practices. Another number three is agricultural policies that incentivize water conservation, soil enhancement, and microclimate management. And number four, water policies that incentivize reduction of gray blue water footprint of agriculture and food systems, not only in crop selection and farming methods, but also in food processing and packaging as well. Number five, trade investment in intellectual property rights policies that protect indigenous and peasants' rights to select, domesticate, breed, exchange, and use native species of crops and livestock varieties. And uh, number six is environmental and food safety policies based on the precautionary principle that avoid reckless introduction of GMOs and other emerging technologies. And number seven, coordinated environmental and agricultural policies on biodiversity. Number eight, agricultural water and energy policies that prioritize the use of natural resources such as land and water for food production, local energy security, and local water security. Number nine is pro-democratization policies that recognize the women's central roles in agriculture and food system, revitalize rural economies, minority cultures, as well as marginalized livelihood practices. Women are a dominant force in agriculture. Based on statistics, 25% of the world's population is composed of women farmers who are often heads of their family or household. The possibilities and benefits of agroecology are indeed wide-ranging and all-encompassing. Thus, we need to look even more closely on how to actively implement its concepts, approaches, and processes in the country. Let us not be left behind from this promising agriculture approach. As an agricultural country, the country can in fact lead the way in agroecology for sustainable agriculture and environment towards food security. We, more than any other country or people, need all the benefits of agroecology and provide us adequate and nutritional food, livelihood and income opportunities to leave our poverty, particularly farmers out of poverty. Alam nyo, ang pinakamahihirap pong mga kababayan natin dito sa Pilipinas ay mga farmers and fishermen. They earn only an average of 150 pesos a day or less than 5,000 a month, which is the poverty level. And so, 40% of them are living below the poverty level. And to make it worse, the coconut farmers po, they earn only on the average 50 pesos a day. And so 60% of them are living below the poverty line of 5,000 a month. And uh, and uh, ang ating pong national average is 25%. So masasabi natin ang nagpapababa po ng poverty level sa, ang, ang nagpapataas ng poverty level sa Pilipinas are our farmers and fishermen. And uh, nice that kailangan din po natin na protektahan ang ating environment because we are the most uh, country, we are the, uh, the number one country at risk from uh, climate change. To cite an agroecology report, the vision of agroecology combines the sciences of ecology and agronomy with the political economy of food production and consumption. This approach goes beyond improving the availability of food to also ensuring access and the achievement of the right to food. Indeed, it should be the standard by which national agricultural strategies, food security plans, and foreign assistance programs are evaluated by their uh, respective agencies. In closing, let me take this opportunity also to update all of you about the other priority legislations that the Senate Agriculture Committee have been pursuing. Early this week, I'm happy to report that we have ratified the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the reconciled version of the amendment to the Fisheries Code. Finally, we have amended the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998. The revised provisions will provide stricter penalties and better production for our fisher folks. And at the same time, 
will help them. Uh, alam mo, according to studies, uh, sa world po, ang uh, contribution ng white touch and uh, aquaculture are equal na. So, they, they foresee the future that if we don't take care of our fisheries resources in our natural waters, then iliit-liit siya and uh, ang, ang mag-provide sa atin ng fish would be our aquaculture. So, we really have to be strict on restrictions on unregulated, unreported, and illegal, illegal fishing. We have also passed the Sugarcane Industry Development Act of 2014, which should put in place programs to promote and support the competitiveness of the Philippine sugar industry, especially for AEC 2015. We are pursuing now the passage of Senate Bill 2126, or the Coconut Farmers and Industry Development Act, which seeks to establish a trust fund that will pay for the implementation of the Coconut Farmers and Industry Development Fund. It mandates the creation of the Coconut Farmers and Industry Fund, a trust fund which shall be perpetually maintained for the development of the coconut industry for the benefit of the coconut farmers and farm workers. It will be used to fund the implementation programs and projects identified with a plan. And, uh, Right now, yung ating pong Coco Levy Fund amounts to 100 billion pesos, 70 billion po na ay nasa, uh, nasa treasury bills, and 30 billion are invested to companies owned by the coconut farmers, and one of them is the United Coconut Planters. Um, I have assured coconut farmers that the bill that will manage the disposition of the 100 billion Coco Levy Fund will be prioritized by the community and will be passed by the Senate in the first quarter of 2015. Also in my legislative agenda is Senate Bill Number 312 titled on Accreating the Philippine Halal Accreditation and Regulatory Board and for other purposes. It is now being discussed in the committee level. My committee has conducted public hearings and two technical working group meetings so far. We are presently drafting a consolidated substitute bill that will become the Philippine Halal Act. To incorporate similar bills filed by other senators, I'm planning to sponsor the bill in the plenary by early next year. And I'm, uh, and this one is very important because, you know, uh, the halal uh, food products, the halal food industry is the sunrise. It's a sunrise industry. When I went to Anuga Fair, uh, the Anuga Food Fair in uh, Bologna, Germany last year, ang marami po doon ay halal food, coco sugar at coco water. So, pumupunta tayo doon para tingnan natin yung mga sunrise industry sa agriculture para uh, and one of them is halal. So we are very confident that we, by passing this bill, we will capture yung halal market, which is uh, ang kanila pong uh, food market worldwide is $700 billion. At ang kaniling all pro halal products worldwide is uh, $2.3 trillion. Yeah, niya. And I'm also, uh, crafting uh, a bill on crop protection para hindi na huli mahuli uh, ulit yung ating populisap and uh, another one I'm crafting the crop insurance subsidy para pag tayo ay nagkakaroon ng uh, what you call this uh, uh, disaster eh, agad makaka-recover ang farmer because they have their own crop insurance I will end this discussion by emphasizing that as an agricultural country, there is no question that agriculture is the key to national economic growth and development. It is my goal to be a significant contributor in bringing back the glory days of agriculture. Together with other like-minded individuals and our organization like CIRCA, we can make it happen. Marami po salamat at magandang mga Thank you very much, Senator Villar.
And this now gives us an opportunity to interact and dialogue with the Senator. There you have it. We heard her advocacies and initiatives on agroecology, as well as uh, fresh from the Senator herself, the bills that she's about to sponsor and are in the making at the Philippine Senate. And so we open the floor for comments, questions, uh, clarifications. Still, uh, sink, everything is still sinking in. <laughs> yes, uh, Chancellor Velasco. Good morning, good morning, Senator. I'd just like to break the ice. Uh, I'm happy that uh, you are very much uh, updated to appreciate uh, Paradigm shift in agriculture. We have to rely more strongly uh, with ecological principles and uh, methods. Uh, ecological principles, which is the foundation of agroecology, operates on a broader scale beyond. And you know, this really has to be, we have to have a scale of, uh, of quite a large area. A good example is uh, if we would like to work with ecological principles, we have to manage the watershed as well as the farming community, as well as the coastal area, because ecology principles will operate and will interact with different sub-ecological systems. So, uh, given that scenario, whatever the interventions one would like to do in a farming community where water is dependent on the watershed, watershed is not uh, well maintained, this will eventually uh, neutralize or uh, minimize the possible intervention uh, of farming level. Uh, given that uh, scenario where ecological principles operate in a broader scale beyond farms and political boundaries, uh, I, I find it a little bit difficult for farmers, only small farms, to take advantage of these ecological principles. And uh, uh, probably we have to look at it if we want to take advantage of ecological principles. Uh, that we have to approach it in a community-wide uh, program rather than on single to small farm because most of our farms are up to one hectare or so. But it is very difficult for a small farmer to take advantage of the ecological principles to benefit his farming towards what we want, uh, safe food, yeah, less impact, less inputs, etc. Maybe I uh, get your comments on this uh, perspective. Thank you. Mayroon tayo mga short-term solution, may long-term. Like for example, uh, hindi naman po mo small farm ka, wala kang way of doing agroecology. Like for example, uh, what we're going, na, going to do now in the urban areas, uh, yung water, ako water impounding. Mm -hmm. Hindi ka dependent muna dun sa mga, like, uh, ina-advise ko po yun dun sa mga hindi nararating ng mga uh, big water sources. Na mag-water impounding kayo, tapos i-circulate nyo yung water. Pag, uh, bakit nyo pababahiin ang mga communities nyo when you can impound the water and use it during times of El Nino or during the hot season when you lack water. So, we should have a take care of our small farm in our own small way, di ba? Like, meron ka sarili mong water impounding, tapos yung, uh, yung uh, tulad ng mga fertilizer, 
hindi mo naman kailangan bumili ng fertilizer, you produce your own fertilizer. And maybe the community will produce. That's why we're enabling the local government in their public market to produce their own fertilizer. So may mga, may mga agro, agroecological practices na small time. And then may mga big time. Of course, in the long run, we have to take care of what you're saying, the watershed and all that. But ako kasi, I, I don't depend on something na maraming kasali. <laughs> kasi you cannot promise that. And at the same time, of course, in the long term, we have a project na we will uh, uh, block, block farms. Pag sasamasamahin uli yung mga small farms into bigger farms like uh, uh, gagawin under maybe uh, uh, under a model of an association or a model of uh, cooperative or whatever model sa, sa sugar ginagawa nila parang uh, yung isang lugar na malapit sa isang sugar mill pinagsasama-sama nila para the, the sugar mill owners plus the association of sugar planters they work together so that they can create an economy of scale so yung mga ganbang practices ako I'm not uh, afraid na we cannot do it uh, in a big way I would like to do it in a small way and maybe in the short term and then a big way in the long term. That's why uh, uh, I know that we cannot make this truly successful without the help of government and their policies and our policies and maybe your, your, the people here in UPLB. But there are small things that we can start doing now that will really help us. Alam mo, ang importante, yung small family farms ang sinasabi nila will be competitive. And how do you make small family farms competitive? Alam mo naman, mahihirap sila. So you try to produce inputs as much as possible within the small family farms. Lahat na magpo-produce mo from the farms, hindi mo nabibili. Because the, the problem is they have no money. They have no capital to buy these inputs. And they can be taught also to make better seeds. And of course, uh, ang solution to sa lack of water in the future would be better seeds that can withstand even without uh, too much water, di ba? So, uh, there are short term and long term. And I believe that uh, we have to really work na uh, uh, we should be more creative and we should make our farmers more creative that they don't become too dependent on inputs uh, they, they rely on government to give it to them. No, they have to make their own inputs in their farms. Tulad nga nitong, ano, nitong ginagawa namin urban gardening. Yung pag, nagkawa na po kami niyan before. Hindi nagtagal eh. Kasi we have to buy the fields. Eh, eh, pinatata, pinaalagaan ko doon sa mga senior citizens. Siguro nagturuturuan ako sino bibili ng fields. Eh ngayon, sabi ko, hindi pwede yun. Kasi who will buy the fields? ba? And who will take care of the electricity? Kasi no, may electricity. Yung aming unang uh, urban aquaculture. Ngayon, wala na electricity, wala na rin water, wala na rin feed. Everything will be there. Uh, yung kakaini ng, ng uh, fishes would be the waste of the garden. And the water that will go to the garden will be the water of the pond in the, by, uh, where the fishes are. So, iikot lang and wala na. We will try to lessen inputs, uh, expenses. Kasi kung paaalaga mo sa senior citizen mo, I'm sure nobody will will uh, 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 provide the, to produce the money to buy the inputs. Diba? So dapat self-sustainable yung project in order that it will be successful and it will be sustainable. Kasi tingin ko yun na naging problem. Nag, nag, ganyan na rin kami before and it did not materialize. Nawala after a while. So tingin ko, because of the inputs, nobody will carry the burden of buying the inputs. So we have to have a model na minimal ang inputs para it will be sustained. Uh, at least yung binibiling inputs, not the inputs that we will be able to create out of the environment. I hope my answer. Thank you, Senator. Okay. How many of in, the, in our audience are students? Can you raise your hand, students? <laughs> I can see some of you. And from the local government uh, unit, uh, from uh, 
municipal government of Los Banos. Do we have anyone here? Okay, uh, Dean uh, Domingo Angeles of the College of Agriculture has a, is raising his hand. Also a horticulturist like the Chancellor. Okay. This Chancellor. <laughs> Magandang umaga po, uh, Sir Norm. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Meron pong pera sa agriculture. However, it is ironic that poverty remains a rural phenomenon. Kahit na po nasasabi natin na three-fourth of our agricultural land uh, at in rural area. Uh, ang mga pagsasakap po kasi ay maliliit lamang and their uh, production is not linked with the industry as well as the as in uh, the marketing system. Yung pong kita yung mga magsasaka at yung mga nagtatrabaho sa pagsasaka ay lubhang maliit. No? Kaya nga po napipilitan lalo na yung mga kabataan na instead na mamalagi sa rural area and work with the farm, they migrate to the city. Because the wage policy of the government is that if you work in the factory, you earn how much? 400 uh, pesos a day. But in the rural the, areas, it's 380. In the urban, 400. That's so right. So the wage policy itself uh, discourages the youth from uh, uh, staying in the farm. And so, sit the lang ako, maglamit ko, hindi pa ako mapuputikan at maaarawan. Uh, so, how, how can we... Uh, ang, ang key dito, Senator Salingo, is to increase uh, rural income. And to do this, I think we can uh, bring uh, the industry, particularly those who are engaged in uh, value-added activities, to the rest of rural areas. However, we need to improve the infrastructure infrastructure, marketing, road, roads, communication, etc. Uh, in Japan, for example, they have a policy that, which they term as uh, income parity policy, in which they assure the youth uh, working in agriculture an income at par, if not higher than their income, if they will work in the city. So, ano ko kaya ang dapat natin gawin uh, para mapanatili natin yung kapataan at uh, magtrabaho at magsiksa na gusto to improve uh, rural agriculture. First of all, we have to educate our youth, the children of our farmers and fishermen. And uh, kasi po ang income nila is 150 a day so they cannot send their children to school. So we have to have the uh, model wherein we can send them to school to become better farmers. Kasi kung hindi sila mag-aaral, and then they will be just like their fathers na uh, uh, hindi maganda ang mga farming pra practices. Kaya hindi sila yung mayaman, di ba? So we have solved that. I have convinced TESDA to provide a scholarship to 50,000 children of farmers or farmers themselves sa ating mga state universities and colleges as part of their extension program. So we have 500 million a year, 50,000 scholarship, uh, approximately, almost 50,000 at 12,000 per student. So lahat po ng bayan sa Pilipinas, if you divide 50,000 by 1,600, ay uh, almost, hindi naman lahat yan, rural areas, mga 50 scholars per town. I think that is a good number to start on to educate the children of farmers. Ngayon, pag-educate natin sa kanila, huwag naman lang about farming methods, but also to run a business. Because family farm is a business. It's not about being a farmer doing manual work. We can always mechanize. Ngayon, Noon nga, binibida ko sa kanila, I went to France. Merong isang uh, doon na uh, nag-aral siya sa family farm school in France. Ano lang yun? Two years course. Hindi nga siya nakagraduate ng college. 
two year course, ipinamanan sa kanya ng tatay niya yung farm niya, 100 hectares. He's doing it mechanized by himself, walang empleyado, 100 hectares, producing wheat. So, and uh, siya ang nagsusupport sa kanyang parents, nakatira sa kanya yung parents niya, kasi yun ang nagpamanis sa kanya. So in return, siya ang magsusupport ng pamilya, kasi sa kanya napunta yung farm. And uh, uh, huwag niyo sabihin sa akin, French yan, fully mechanized, kaya maya, may kaya siya. Hindi naman siya mayaman para may kaya siya. But, I talked to Agawad Sika, Saka, Awardi, in La Union. Ang farm niya is one hectare. nag intercropping siya. It's a combination of rice. I don't know if it's organic rice or, or plain rice and vegetable. And then, nag-aalaga siya ng uh, cattle fattening. Sabi ko, magkano ikita mo? Outstanding farmer. Ordinary, simple. Uh, one million a year ang gross. At sabi niya sa akin, magkano cost niya 1 million mo? Sabi niya, less than one half. So, ipagpalagay natin 400,000. So he earns uh, 600,000 a year, uh, 50,000 a month, from a 1 hectare farm. So hindi niyo pwedeng sabihin na yung 1 hectare farm is a uh, uh, doom ka to poverty. Eh yun ang average size. In fact, three, 1 to 3 hectares na yung mga ating land reform beneficiary. So, it's a matter of how do you do your farming. Oh. Kasi, kung yung system natin before, yung pa din ang gagamit and hindi tuturuan yung mga bata to do better system of farming, then we will be doomed to poverty. But if we have to start from somewhere, we have to teach their children to be better farmers than their parents. At hindi naman hopeless kasi ito one hectare farm earning 600,000 a year. Eh hindi na masama yung 50,000 naman. Sabi mo nga, pag nag, uh, nag uh, ano ka dito, nag uh, ano tawag doon, high school graduate ka na, trabaho sa kasakumpanya, 10,000. Eh ito, 50,000. So there is a chance sa mga family farms in the provinces. And uh, alam niyo sa Taiwan, I'm going to Taiwan first quarter. Ayaw daw mag-farm ng mga bata. Alam mo, ginawa nila, nilagyan nila ng tourism aspect ang farming. They have in one in one uh, region in Taiwan, Ilan region, they have 200 agro-tourism farms at run by young people. Kasi nung alaman nila na may kasamang tourism, medyo kinanahan yung mga bata kasi hindi ba? Uh, mas sexy ang uh, may kasamang tourism. So you still have the farm, but you have tourists to come to your farm. At hindi naman na ay nangyayari sa Pilipinas, si Costales, di ba? So, Nag-start siya ng one hectare. Uh, naging five hectares na siya ngayon, di ba? And then sabi niya sa akin, yung tinayo niya daw ng greenhouse, inutang niya sa mga, uh, uh, mga OFW sa Amerika. Na uh, ang isa daw niya nga uh, isa daw niya ano isa daw niya nga uh, greenhouse cost about 480,000. So bawat isang OFW magkano ba po 10,000 US. 10,000 US ba 'yon? Na binabayaran niya ng uh, 80,000 pesos a year or around ano yung 80,000 2,000 ano 2,000 US, di ba? So and ang um, payback period is 80 divided by 480, uh, 6, 6 years. And ang kontrata yata, 12 years. So, lahat ng uh, beyond 12 years, tubo na yun. Diba? Yun daw ginawa niya, kaya siya nakatayo ng mga greenhouses niya. Ibig sabihin, may paraan. Kasi tayo, ine-equate natin yung farm natin as kahirapan. It's not kahirapan. It's a business. It's a matter of managing the business well and uh, finding how you make your business profitable. Tinanong na yan eh, why are they not competitive? Based on study, ako ko kung sir ka din ang nag-study. Sila rin. Lack of mechanization that makes uh, the labor cost very high and lack of capital. Diba? Lack of socialized credit. O, tinatanong ko yung land bank, ano ba kayo? Yan ang mandate nyo. Magbigay kayo ng socialized credit sa farmers. Sabi nila, eh, nagbibigay naman kami 4%. Kaya lang hindi namin kayang mag, uh, 
mag, uh, ano, microfinance kasi ang liliit, we don't have the, ano, the infrastructure to do microfinance. So, binibigay niya daw sa cooperative, sa microfinance companies, sa mga association, and so forth. And binigay sa ito, eh, baka kulang ang rich. Diba? Binigay sa akin isang kakapal na rich. Oo, listahan ng kanilang outlet in all the provinces except Apayao. Ang dami. Alam mo na andun. E eh, tinanong ko yung anak ko na graduate ng ward. Ano tingin mo reason? May rich, may pera, but ayaw. Siguro hindi nila ma-fill up ang yung application form. Hindi nila kayang fill up ang application form. It's so complicated. Tapos nakausap ko yung president ng Cavite State University. Sabi niya nga sa akin, eh ako nga, presidente na ng Cavite State. Hindi ko pa ma-fill up ang yung application form. Hirap na hirap ako. O, that's the problem. Diba? They did not make the system simple enough for an ordinary farmer that will avail of small amount to be able to do it by themselves. So, siguro, dapat tuturuan ko itong land bank na ang kanilang CSR is to teach uh, farmers how to fill up application form. Diba? Pa, kasi ito na, may problema na eh. Diba? Ang daming pera ng land bank, Mura na nga, 4%. Sabi nila, pag pinasa daw nila sa microfinance, pinadagdagan lang nila ng 10%. So that's 14. That's very low. Kesa sa 5-6. Eh, nagpa-5-6 eh. Oh. Alam nyo, nung kami magsimula ni Senator Villar, nung kami ay bagong graduate sa college, ang pera namin, 10,000 pesos. Yung truck namin bibilin will cost us 140,000 pesos. Kasi siya, galing siya sa banko, alam niya, mura yung IB, IGLF ba yan? IG, we are the richest IGLF borrower. <laughs> Kasi doon kami humira, 14%, 7 years. That started our business. Kasi pag 7 years, doon sa tracking, you will earn so much in 3 years. So, kasi ganyan ang, ganyan ang track eh. Pag bago, hindi nasisira, ang laki-laki ng kita mo. On the fourth year, magsisimulang manit, sumira, then that's the time bumababa ang inka mo. Kailangan lahat ng kikitain mo sa first three years, iipunin mo at mag invest ka na ng gusto para pag nabulok yung truck mo on the fourth year, you can buy another truck to replace it. Diba? So it's a matter of uh, educating yung magmamanage ng farm. Alam mo kung magkano yung murang cost of capital, eh, galit na galit nga si Manny, yung mga supplier namin. Uh, para para lang kami maghirap nagsimula. Yumamang na kami, sila hindi pa. Paano? Yung komita, hindi naman inupo, inu, inupo yung income. Ibinili ng kotse, ibinili ng bahay, ibinili ng damit, ibinili ng gamit, at social na social. Tapos yung capital remain the same. So, tuwing nga... Uh, uh, Naniningil kay Manny, puro lahat, walang pera, pero pinakamagaganda. Mas maganda sa amin ang kotse, mas maganda sa amin ang bahay. Noong po kami nagsisimula, hindi kami bumili ng bahay, hindi kami bumili ng kotse. Nireinvest namin lahat ang earnings namin para pagdating ng times na, uh, na yun nga, nasisira na ang truck, meron na kaming capital to be able to support the business. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi, hindi, Parang masama gobyerno, walang ginawa gobyerno, ganyan-ganyan. Hindi tayo kayang lahat tulungan ang gobyerno. We should help ourselves. We should have our own strategy on how to manage our farm. We should avail only of what we can get from the government, like scholarship, maybe ang DA po, DOST, DTI, nagbibigay po sila ng shared facilities program. But provided you are a cooperative, you are an association, Babayaran ng LGU yung 15%, they will give the 85% free. Ibig sabihin, yung makikmakina nyo will come to you free. Ang problema, pag binigay ang makina, hindi marunong magpaandar ng makina, hindi marunong mag-repair ng makina, kaya nakatunganga lahat yung makina doon. Eh, we need mechanization. So, we have to teach these people how to operate machine and how to repair machine. And then we have to teach them how to fill up application form from the money coming from land bank because you cannot earn from 5-6. Walang business na kumikita ng kasalasan laki ng 5-6. The only way you can survive 5-6 is huwag nyo bayaran yung utang nyo. 
It's bad also. Kasi 5, 6 is 1 peso. Uh, yung inutang mong 5 ngayon, babayaran mong 6 pesos tomorrow. That's 20%. Over a period of 360 days, that's 7,200%. Sino namang negosyo? Ang kumikita ng 7,200%. E eh, di doom na kayo na mahirap doon. So you cannot really, we should stop this 5, 6, di ba? and borrow from land bank at uh, matuto tayo mag-borrow sa mga microfinance companies and uh, control these microfinance companies that they should limit their interest rate to 14%. Di ba? Kasi bibigay sa kanila ng land bank ng 4, pinag sabi ng land bank, ang ini-encourage daw nila plus 10 for doing uh, retail. So, but minsan, dahil walang competition, eh, Nagiging 24, nagiging 36. I don't know how much yung mga microfinance are doing in terms of percentage. But, uh, sabi ko nga ako, ako ordinary farmer, at ako eh, hindi naging senator, eh, kaya ko rin uh, umaman sa farming. <laughs> uh, pamamaraan lang yan. Eh. So, so uh, oh, sir, uh, Dr. Mauricio, a retired uh, I hope I am not the only force that it is true. What is but, ma, our problem now in Mount Makili, probably you can contribute much, especially on food, livelihood, and uh, mitigating climate change and preserving the uh, cleanliness and uh, fish production in, in Laguna, uh, Laguna de Bay. Uh, I feel guilty because uh, for 11 years I have destroyed the mountains in Central Indiana. But now I am here retired and I want, I will have die probably for several years. So probably, could I make some suggestion for it? Uh, upland agriculture would uh, uh, prosper here in Mount Makiri, for example, uh, in the attention of Dr. Sagegi and Dr. Uh, uh, Sanchez. And uh, you people here uh, employed in uh, living in uh, Spaniards knowledge. For example, when I was in uh, Busan Sur, we prevented or minimized smuggling in the forest by using uh, the creeks to produce fish, crabs, shells, eels, and other products by compartmentalizing the creeks. So that instead of uh, the whole day, uh, fish, 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 uh, your butt, your butt, uh, to be broken. Right? Instead, you open the door of the, of the, the wall, the lower, the lower wall, and instead, you just pick up the fish and put them in the sand, the basket. So here, uh, this could be a livelihood and for food production here, uh, in the upland areas were farming and this could prevent a little bit from hygiene making. And then another a technology developed we developed there is we plant uh, bamboos yeah. along the creeks. That's rivers. one of the ants too. But uh, I suggest that between with, with the with the spiny bamboos we plant bio because bio has a small hole is the hole of the bio, the small hole, and the flesh is very, uh, very thick. And, and, and as you uh, scientists say, charcoal would be a very nice uh, product. Uh, charcoal production would be uh, a good uh, livelihood project for upland uh, farmers. And then, again, for food, uh, about the about the bamboos, 
Rananas and Abaka planted. Because if the mangroves would not reach the water in the creek, the bananas in the Abaka will provide the water. They will be the irrigation system instead of uh, what? Uh, so, yung answer po ay uh, we will do, we will plan. Oo. Alam nyo, uh, yung mga mountains, may total lag ba na tayo? So, it's out of the question na puputuli ng trees for lagging. So, kami po, miski kami, kami ay uh, uh, home builder. We don't use wood anymore. Lahat substitute for wood. Ngayon po ang pinopromote natin, yung mga furniture maker, yung mga gumagamit ng wood, they're using bamboo. Kaya ngayon, malaki ang kita po ng bamboo farms. Like for example, in Talim Island, they, all the trees there are almost all bamboos. Ang maganda sa bamboo, it's sustainable. You cut the pole, it will regrow. Unlike you, sa tree, pag kinat mo ang tree, wala na. Tapos na yon. So we go to bamboo. In fact, I myself, I will build a bamboo farm uh, next year. Uh, kasi yung aking pumbayan, Las Piñas, it's uh, nandun po sa amin yung bamboo organ. So I thought that it will be nice to develop bamboo. In all these years that I was congresswoman, I planted bamboos along my river banks. Kasi wala po kami pang riprap, so might as well plant bamboo para to hold the soil. Kasi yung bamboo along the river banks will hold the soil. And at the same time, one of our livelihood project is parol. We are three generation parol makers and our frames are made from bamboo. Kaya pwede pang raw materials ng aming product. Ako ngayon po, noong isang taon, Ako po ay naghanap ng machinery to process bamboo. Unfortunately, nung gawin yung door na ipagbibili ko sana sa aming company, Vista lang, na-reject because of quality and price. So, hanggang ngayon po naghahanap ako ng uh, technology, ng isang, uh, isang uh, makina that I can buy. I will plant the bamboo. I will do processing of bamboo. I want a makina that would be cheap enough and uh, good quality enough so I can sell to our company, Vistaland. Yung doors, kasi maraming doors ang kailangan nila. They build houses. Pwede din sa floor. Pwede din sa cabinet. So, so our, our, ano, ako ha, as I see it, our, ano, is, our potential is bamboo. Kasi sustainable. O walang issue na pag pinutol mo, pinatay mo. ba? Kasi magre-regrow. Magre-regrow ang bamboo. So, that's the answer to our forest. Of course, if uh, yung forest eh, hindi adapted sa bamboo, that's another story. We just have to find, I think, uh, na yung, yung trees na we can, we can make a business out of, and yet it's sustainable. Actually, ang, uh, ang uh, planting of trees is sustainable, except sa Pilipinas, Eh, nag naglalaging, illegal laging tayo. Sa, I went to a place in Australia uh, sa, kasi bumili kami ng seeds sa kanila and ando ng um, seeds production ng government sa inside the forest. So we went there and I saw how they manage sustainable laging uh, by year. Bawa, this year, malaki kasi yung forest area nila. This year, ito ang puputulin sa Baitanim. Next year, yung yun ang puputulin sa Baitanim. So parang hagdan po, may maliit, may malaki, may gano'n. Yung full trees ang puputulin, hindi lahat puputulin. And then pagputol nun, tatamnan uli. So siguro sa next 20 years, ang cycle niya, para siya putulin. And it's really sustainable. It's really sustainable laging because they're, they're ano, ano tawag doon, disciplined to do it. Eh tayo naman dito, kaya naman tayo hindi nagiging sustainable laging. Wala man discipline dito sa ating bansa. Eh, lahat palusot. Yung friend ko, yung kanyang anak eh, sa ano ba yung, Marines, nag-report nag na illegal laging, pinatay ng mga kasama. Military na yun. Ha? So, it's, it's, ano, it's, uh, everything is okay as long as the people are disciplined enough to do their thing. But, uh, ang problema natin is, non-implementation of the law. Everything. Kaya, pinakamaganda na yung bamboo kasi pag kahit nila putulin, hindi na mamatay. ba? Kasi ang trees, pag pinutol mo, tapos ka na doon. So, maybe, uh, to answer that, 
uh, non-discipline ng Filipinos, maybe we should plant bamboo if bamboo is okay in that kind of place. Uh, uh, Mr. Mauricio, short lang ho. We have one last uh, question uh, from a lady. Sige, sir, sir. Uh, well, again, regarding the bamboo, uh, we have the labong. Yeah, yung isa nga po may bamboo farm din sa Misa. Nagbebenta na siya ng bamboo. May restaurant pa siya. Kasi farm tourism eh. At ang kanyang pinakamasarap na luto doon is lubyang sariwang labong ng bamboo. <laughs> Kaya, uh, kasi pag farm tourism, ang isa-serve ko sa, sa iyong bisita, yung introduce ko. Pinakamasarap. The best I have tasted na lubyang sariwang babong, labong ang bamboo. And to produce yeah, the labong, to, to, to convince the bamboo to produce the labong, we cut the bamboo approximately two, 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 Bamboo. Bamboo and then during uh, rain, uh, you get the anai with the wings, put them on the bamboo plums, and you produce now the mushroom. Masarap yung mushroom. Magandang umaga po sa inyo. Ako po si Raquel Papalate, uh, a former uh, thesis grantee ng CIRCA. And natutuwa rin po ako nandito ang mga taga-Picard. Uh, ako po ay nasa media. Ang aking program ay Samot Saring K. Uh, kabukiran, kagubatan, katubigan. Kasama po dito sa ating agroecology. At uh, alam ko po na mayroon po pala kayong uh, parang 200 your giving 200 scholars for TESDA. Pero sa tingin ko po, uh, siguro po lang 50. Yan. So, sa palagay ko po po lang na promotion. So, siguro po sa dahil baka ako lang yung nasa media nung ngayon dito. Ano po. Uh, siguro po, yan ang aking uh, pwede pong hilingin sa inyo na patuloy po tayo na supportahan din po ang media. Especially po uh, pagdating po sa agriculture. Sabi ko, gusto ko sanang uh, Magkaroon na rin ng aking sariling farm, ano? pero hindi ako basta makaalis. So ang ginagawa ko po is to visit mga farmers ng Cavite, ng Calabarzon, at uh, patuloy din na i-encourage po ang ating mga kabataan. May pera po sa, sa agrikultura. Kinukwenta ko nga sa isang, sa isang ektaryang uh, kamote lang, pwede po kayong uh, mag-harvest sa isang season ng 400,000 pesos. So, yun po. Kaya, kasama po doon sa inyo pong uh, promotion. So, mag, magkasanig diwa tayo na ito po ay tuloy-tuloy na, na magkaroon po ng ganito pong mga programa. At uh, sana po, uh, under DCJV, uh, dahil kalabarzon lang po kami, pati po yung mga, mga projects ng Picard sa ibang lugar, ay ipinopromote ko rin para po sa... Uh, learning po, lesson ng ating po mga taga-kalabarasan. Thank you very much po. Yung po yung scholarship sa TESDA, uh, kasi po, uh, dati, binibigay nila 3% of our budget to agriculture. Eh, ang ating pong agriculture workers, if you go by statistics, 33 million po ang ating all, uh, total agri uh, workers, uh, 11 million po sa agriculture. So, it's 30% of uh, of the total workers. So, dapat bibigay sa atin 30% of the budget. Diba? Kung uh, ang priority is according to your share of the market. Diba? But, uh, sabi nila, uh, meron daw silang priority, BPO. So, sabi ko, okay lang yun. But, not 3% of the market when you are 30% of the total uh, uh, workers, di ba? It should be something somewhere near. So, nung year na yon, binigyan nila kami ng 15%. So, nung ano, is 25,000 scholar uh, at 12,000 last year. But today, without even them asking it, ask, without 
even us asking them, ginawa nilang 30%, which is 500 million. So, uh, lahat yun pupunta. Kasi sinasabi nila, wala daw mag-aaral ng agriculture. Eh, sabi ko, paano mag-aaral ng agriculture? Yung, yung, ano nyo, yung eskwela nyo, eh, pagkalayo-layo sa mga bahay, no, mga mag-aaral. So, wala naman silang pasahe. Wala din sila ibabayad sa board. So, we have to bring the school nearer to the people. Kaya, doon ko po inano yung tinatch yung SUCs, yung state universities and colleges. Because uh, it is the only institution that has the network to reach the people. It's uh, 111 SUCs with five, 454 campuses. Ibig sabihin, kung 454 campuses, 1,600 and towns and cities in the Philippines, they are in every three towns in the Philippines. That is the rich we want to have. Because that is the rich na kaya mag-aral ng mga anak ng farmers because malapit sa kanila. Diba? O kahit na hindi magbudya mo yung lahat ng towns, yun na lang towns na nandun siya, yung 554 campuses, ay 454, lagyan mo lang ng 100 students na scholar doon, that's 45,540. Hindi na-reach mo na yung, ano mo, yung target market mo, di ba, na mag-aaral. At pagturo mo, ibagay mo yung ituturo mo kung ano ginagawa nila doon sa lugar na yon. Huwag mo turuan ng fishing pag walang fishing, di ba? Huwag mo turuan ng rice farming kung hindi naman sila nagra-rice farming. Ituro mo yung crops na adapted doon sa lugar na yon. At turuan mo rin mag-business. O, turuan mo ng entrepreneurship. Turuan mo ng simple accounting, simple financial management. So, they become farm businessman. Their farm becomes a business, not a source of employment. Di ba? They are not employee. They are farm owners owning a farm business. Yun ang approach. Para kikita yung farm, lalaki yung kita, pero hindi na sila pupunta sa Maynila kasi mas malaki ang kita nila doon kaysa pumunta sila sa Maynila. Diba? So, yun ang solution doon. And uh, tayong lahat, dapat yung mga bata, ay mo ba magka-farm ka? Na it's a business. It's not anymore about planting rice. Na yung, dapat tigilan natin yung pagkanta na nung hindi ka makaupo, hindi ka makatayo. Madala. Kasi gano'n ang ano nila ng farm. Kaya ayaw nila mag-farm eh. Diba? Ang farm ngayon is a business. It's not anymore about man. Kasi pinopromote nun, it's a manual uh, labor. Diba? It's not. It's not, a, it's not a manual labor yung farm. It's yours. It's your business. Make it profitable. Diba? Before I call on the Dr. Sugigi, there's one last mahabol uh, from uh, Dr. Dodong uh, Morosilio. I'm a student. Okay, tell him. He will entertain two more. Yeah, I'm a student kasi sila yung ating target. Magandang umaga, ma'am. Yes. Si Dodong Morosilio sa ating Social Economics Department. Ano ba mong title sa ating papano mapapasexy yung scholarship ko? Kasi ako, noong 1974, naging beneficiary ako ng uh, 18 month scholarship program sa Mindanao State University. Medyo sexy yung program na yun. Yung 18 months, meron na kami math at saka English, pero da- lahat ng masak... Hindi na kailangan ng math, arithmetic lang yan. Yeah, right. Wala naman yun. Wala naman yun. Wala naman kayo natatakot. Wala naman dito. Wala nang math dito. Wala nang trigonometry, wala nang algebra, wala nang chemistry. Doon sa mga takot na takot na courses kayo. Lahat tayo takot na takot doon. Sabi niya, maganda sa agriculture, sa business, Eh, kahit hindi ka masyadong magaling, arithmetic lang to. Oh. So ma'am, arithmetic oh. lang yun ma'am. Oh, ano, gastos minus income is, uh, ano, rather gastos minus uh, ex, uh, income, uh, revenues minus expenses is income. Tatlo lang yun, hindi nyo ba kayang gawin yun? <laughs> so yun, ang galit ang practical ng alis mo, sa Carpen 3, electricity, ang twist doon, so 18 months program uh, required kami na mag 
set up ng sarili naming business. Yung program na yun, meron? Yes, meron tie up sa banko. Every 15 days, pwede kami mag-withdraw ng pera sa banko for our subsistence. At sa kayong capital requirement namin for operations ng aming business, kukunin din namin sa banko. At the end of the cycle, magbabalansin na kami sa banko. Tapos kung ano yung kita namin, amin na. No, so yung 18-month period na yun, nakadalawang cycle, ang pinili kong project ay fattening ng baboy pagdala sa Marawi yun. Pero may nabibili na naman na <laughs> Iyan yung idea ng farm school. Yes. Oh. Ang then, farm school, it's a, uh, uh, nagpasa kasi tayo, kaya ako nagpunta sa France, nagpasa tayo ng farm school act. Oh, meron tayong farm school law na ipinasa ng Congress ni Senator Angara. Kaya lang, yung concept niya, it's a secondary education. Lalagyan sa high school ng, uh, ng farm curriculum para ma-encourage yung mga high school students to become farmers. Oo. Pero dito sa France, iba. Ang kanilang farm school is a vocational school after high school. Although may high school din sila, pero meron din silang vocational after high school. At ang tinuturo nila ay iba-ibang klase. Yung isa kong napuntahan, tinuturo nila is taking care of horses. So, kaya nagpunta kami sa horse farm, nagtuturo sila. Ang idea is 50% of the, their time they spend in school to, base, to learn basic uh, uh, no, siguro na andun yung entrepreneurship yung sinasabi mo na, na tuturuan sila maghawak ng pera. Oo. But the rest, they spend on the farm. Oo. Uh, doing real farm work. Oo. Para marunong sila ng farm work, marunong din sila mag-manage ng farm. And uh, napunta namin is uh, a horse farm. It's an industry pala sa France. So nagtinuturuan nila na at ang mga nag-aalaga ng horse, Ang lahat estudyante nila, halos babae lang. <laughs> you know, I'm so surprised na sa horse pa lang, mga babae. Diba? And then we go to a farm na ang specialty is livestock and horticulture, farm school. Puro lalaki naman na nag-aaral. It's, it's ano ha. And then the last one, we got went to an urban area. Ang specialty is landscaping and uh, <laughs> Building management and managing rivers. Would you believe that they are teaching students to manage river? Baka ito na yung sinasabi ng ating forester that you have to manage a river. Kasi doon po sa lugar nila meron doon UNESCO recognized na river. Maybe they're teaching them how to maintain that river. And then uh, landscaping at saka building maintenance. Oh, kaya sinabi mo, electrician. Siyempre, pag may farm ka, nagme-maintain ka rin ng building, di ba? So, nag-aaral ka ng carpentry, electricity, and then, So, ang farm is not all about planting. It has its uh, related businesses, di ba? Pati managing a river. Uh, ano. Ngayon lang ako nakakita ng course na managing a river. Sa ko nga, dapat turuan kami, no? Kasi may river din kami. So, maganda. It's, it's ano, iba-iba. Depende sa lugar where you come from. And it's sexy, di ba? Oh, have you heard of a horse managing a river? Oh, natinig nyo na ba yun? Oh. So, ibig sabihin, eh, kasi ang, ang feature natin ng farming is just planting. Manual labor of planting. For, uh, agriculture is not like that. You have to manage, uh, pag ikaw ay nag-agritourism, uh, you have to manage a hotel, di ba? You have to learn how to cook. Kasi may agritourism ba na walang pagkain at saka walang tirahan, you know? So, maraming aspect ng agriculture and we can really make it sexy for the young people. Okay. So, may pagtatanong from the students. Uh, students. Uh, o, oh, natatanong na yung mga students. <laughs> Um, good morning, my name is Darren Garcia, Agri-Business Management student. And um, uh, question po, it's very ideal to look at agri, uh, agroecology, especially that it's, uh, you produce a diversity of products for the small-scale farmers. 
But then if you put the picture of AEC 2015 into, into this, it's quite for me alarming to see that these people will be pushed, uh, the prices of their uh, goods will be pushed to be competitive since uh, agriculturally advanced um, countries will go into the Philippines. Now, it's very hard for me to realize that you are producing small, then how can you, how can you uh, be competitive enough to battle these agri uh, agriculturally advanced countries going to the F Philippines for next year? So you will concern Korea as an agribusiness student, seeing that, number one, we're not that mechanized compared to other countries like Vietnam, Thailand, which, of course, you know, was having mechanized lang Thailand, not oh, Vietnam. Okay, sorry for that. So, yun po, paano po ba tayo magiging competitive enough looking at that and putting in place agroecology na yun nga po, it does not specialize in one crop type po. So, meaning, um, it would be harder for you to target a specialized market uh, in, in, at the end of the day. Kaya nga tayo, uh, yung marketing effort, uh, binablock farming natin eh. So, because we we have to sell our products as a group. Like ako, yung meron akong uh, uh, RC, in Las Piñas, we have a three-generation parole mating industry in one barangay. So, Kawawa naman sila, natalo na kami ng, ano, ng uh, San Fernando, Pampanga kasi tinayuan sila ng Pastuan Village. So ang ginawa ko, inorganize ko yung, ano, yung uh, barangay na gumagawa ng parot. 63 families pala sila. Pinagsama-sama sila, 63 families, samahan na magpaparol sa Las Piñas. Nagputap sila ng website. And then, uh, Nag-train sila sa, ano, sa, tawag doon, sa Design Center Philippines. Para naman may bago-bago naman doon sa ginagawa nila. Ngayon, nakakakuha sila ng mga, uh, ano tawag doon, big orders from malls. O, kasi mall decor sila eh. Diba? Hindi naman kung parol maker ka, gagawin mo lang parol. You can make mall decors. And then there was time yung, ano, yung PLDT mall there sa kanila ng 30,000 parol. They can do it because they are 63 families in one barangay. So, syempre, may presidente yan. Yung matalitali, no? Yun ang magiging presidente. <laughs> siya yung, ano, siya yung nag-utap ng website. Siya yung nag-ipag-usap dun sa mga buyers nilang malalaki. But it's for the benefit of the 63 parole maker. So ikaw, kung bumalik ka sa probinsya, may one hectare farm ka, ikaw yung maging presidente, ikaw yung matalitanin, no? Ikaw maglagay sa website, ikaw ang mag-negotiate sa ano. Talaga gano'n, somebody has to really take care of them. Hindi naman lahat ng ating farmers magagaling. O, kung may isang magaling na dumating sa buhay nila, katulad ni Costales, ino-organize niya yung kanyang community para lahat ng benefit sa agroturism. Si Daisy, Daisy, ano ba yun? Duran, sa Bulacan. Siya rin ang nag-o-organize doon sa bayan niya, doon sa Bulacan. O ganun talaga eh. Uh, para kayo maging competitive in marketing, you have to organize. You produce individually, but when you sell your products, you have to be a group para pag hininga kayo ng malaking order, kaya nyo. Diba? Yun lang naman ang problema ng maliit eh. Pag sinabi sa yung malaking order, hindi mo makaya. But as a group, you can. And it's for the benefit of everybody. And uh, uh, look at it as you CSR mo sa community mo. Ikaw yung pinakamagaling doon, tulungan mo yung community mo. At tulungan mo rin yung sarili mo. Kasi pag kayo, when you can negotiate as a group, okay yun. Uh, you can compete. Uh, wal walang, ano, walang problema yan. Eh yung aming parol lang. Nakakaya na nila ngayon. Oo. Oh, oh. Pag pumapangit ang produkto, pinababalik uli sa design center para mag-aral uli. Yung design center, they teach you how to, ano, sinasabi nila sa inyo yung color of the year, yung mga bagong design, libre, DTI yun eh. Marami naman ang gobyerno na ibinibigay na, ano, kaya lang minsan, hindi natin ma-avail kasi hindi natin alam. That's why, if you are in a certain industry, you have to find them cannot be given to you na on a silver platter. Like ako, uh, Senate Committee on Agriculture, hindi man ako agriculture. 
Eh, ako lang nagustuhan ng agriculture kasi is poverty alleviation. Diyan naro ang aking advocacy is poverty alleviation. E naandyan lahat ang mahirap. So, diyan ako pumunta kasi in there I can make a difference. But I don't pretend that I know about agriculture. Nagtataka nga ako, ba't niyo ako pinapunta dito? <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm learning. I'm learning. Hinahanap ko yung mga sirka, mga iri, mga pill rice, yan. May world fish para dito. Para I will learn the different sectors of agriculture. So that when I make uh, legislation or adv I advise people, alam ko kung saan sila papupuntahin. Ba? Kaya ikaw, pag nasa industry ka, hanapin mo. Huwag mo intayin ang gobyerno magsabi sa iyo, hindi ko ka pumunta. Walang magsasabi sa iyo. Ikaw ang hahanap what branches of government will be able to help you sa iyong mga problema. O, hindi, hindi. Hindi ka lang talaga gobyerno natin. Hindi proactive. Tapos tayo, na kailangan natin, tayo ang proactive. Hanapin sila. O hindi mo sila hahanapin, hindi nila ibobolunti na sarili. <laughs> Definitely. Eh kung hindi nga nila binobolunteer sa senador, lalo na sa inyo, estudyante lang kayo. <laughs> <laughs> so, ikaw na ba kayo sa dilip? Ma'am, hindi ko ito question, but uh, siguro uh, follow up kung sa mga sinasabi. Yung advocacy mo about uh, vegetable gardening and yung punto ni Dean uh, Angeles about yung the lack of, or was it somebody else na lack of interest na in agriculture. Yet yung agriculture, as you have pointed out, seems to be the backbone, yes. not only for feeding people, but also for poverty alleviation. You know that agriculture being the backbone of, ano, hindi galing sa akin yun. I asked the chief economist of ADP how we can make this country progress. Sabi ko, sabi nila, tourism na. Sabi niya, no, it's agriculture. At ang kasunod ng agriculture is OFW, hindi pa tourism. Kasi tapos nung makita ko yung figure ng employed in the Philippines, 11 million sa agri out of 33 employed in the Philippines, 11 million sa agriculture, 12 million sa OFW. Di tama siya, it's really agriculture and OFW. Between the two of them, that's 23 million out of 33, 10 million na lang yung various, di ba? So, tama siya. E, foreigner siya eh. Kaya mga Pilipino, hindi natin alam yung mga tulis. It's supported by figures. Di ba? Kung 33 million, 11 million sa agriculture, 12 million OFW. Ito to, between agriculture and OFW, yun na yung backbone ng ating bansa. Di ba? Ma'am, yung punto about education, no? At uh, sinayot ninyo na yung about SUCs, that they are all over the country at pwedeng bilhin. Uh, I wanted to point out na yung, ito yung tinatawag yung mga small time pero malaking impact. Dahil lang um, DepEd ay focal agency ng, ng CIRCA, about a year ago, in-approach kami ni Brother Angel. Ganito man yung konsepto. Yung school gardening, which was here before, before the war even, uh, ay parang gusto niyang gawing vehicle uh, for one, uh, addressing nutrition, two, for educating the youth about agriculture, and three, suguro for itong uh, sinasabi niyo, agroecological practices. Dahil lang parang sinasabi niya ay uh, before, ang school gardening is an extracurricular activity. Gusto niya ngayon na medyo i-input talaga doon sa curriculum ng schools na maging teaching facility. Alam niyo yung pinasa nating uh, uh, agriculture, uh, agriculture farm, farm school app. Nagpasa eh. Ginagawa ngayon ng IRR. Ang, uh, ang in charge is DEP eh, secondary. Secondary. So it's really by law. Uh, yung curriculum ng agriculture should go into the secondary schools kasi it's a law. It's a law passed in 2013 and ginagawa nila yung IRR ngayon. So yung sinasabi ni uh, Brother Rivistro, it's it's not his idea na 
baka pwedeng gawin. There's a law. Okay. Okay. Na in in, in minamandate 'yon. That's a uh, farm school in secondary school uh, run by DepEd. At saka yung sinasabi mo na, na nung bata tayo, nung bata ako, nasa elementary school ako, public school, talaga nagtatanim kami. Mm -hmm. At dala namin nung araw, wala yung mantika, nasa lata. Nasa lata. <laughs> yun ang aming, hindi naman tayo nabili nun ng, ano eh, ng plastic uh, pay. Ang dala namin yung sembuko. Yung uh, pinagtanggalan ng mantika. At merong Merong uh, river doon sa tabi ng school namin. Doon namin iniigip ang tubig namin. That's agroecology, di ba? O, oh, ang tubig mo galing sa river, dinadala mo doon sa school, at doon ka nagtatanim. Wala namang pag-inong fertilizer. In fact, uh, noong 18th century, lahat nagpo-composting. Then they discovered this uh, uh, ano na, chemical fertilizer in itong mag- na 19th century. So lahat sila, dahil mas madaling gumawa ng chemical sa factory, naging chemical. Pero ngayon, bumabalik na ulit sila sa organic. Even New York City, gusto nila mag-composting ng kanilang uh, uh, kitchen waste. Duro, wala na silang pagdala ng mga waste nila. Nairap na lahat ang mga cities where to bring those waste products. Kami po sa Las Piñas, 75% of our waste product, we recycle. So we only throw 25%. Kung kami masusunod, kung ako masusunod, gusto ko ah, 100%, eh ako lang naman mag-isang nag-process. Uh, In my own capacity, hindi to local government. Tinulungan nila ako, but this is... And you know, we spend 90 million a year for throwing garbage. Yung kapitbahay namin ng Paranaque, they spend 400 million a year for throwing garbage. It's a BNB save 300 million a year. What, you can, what can you do with 300 million pagkakita in terms of social services? Just by recycling your waste. Hindi nga ako ma-imagine na ganun kamahal magtapo ng basura sa Metro Manila. 9,000 per truck. So every truck that you save, ay you recycle, you save for the city, 9,000. So, it's really, this is agroecology practice. There are practices that we are doing, which we don't, ano, hindi, hindi mo alam, yun na pala yung agroecology. Mahirap lang intindihan, high sounding word, agroecology. But really, our practices, isa yun na yun eh. Hindi lang natin alam, yun yun, di ba? So, uh, alam mo kaya tumigil ng pagtatanin, ang mga estudyantes, Kasalanan ng mga nanay. Ayaw pahirapan yung mga anak. Ang nagagali sa school. Pag pinagagawa ng manual labor yung mga anak. Eh ako, kung ako nanay, at tuturuan yung anak ko mag-farming mag at maglinis ng classroom, matutuwa ako. Kasi pagkatatamad ng mga bata. <laughs> Ang 
subjekte nangunguro. So <laughs> kami elementary kinukulong kami ng teacher. Ang principal, <laughs> yung principal namin ang solution ng child ko. Ano po kulutin namin? Hindi kami nagagalit ngayon. Ganun din ang principal, human rights abuses. <laughs> You know, whenever I go to Japan, I always wish I ask in my next lifetime I will be born in Japan. Because they're cleaner and they're more disciplined. In my next lifetime, if there is really a next life. <laughs> Anyway, ma'am, yung susundan namin yung, ano, yung entry through the schools, uh, nakikipag-usap na kami sa IIRR at sa aking brother Armin. So, we intend to start it dito sa, sa Laguna, uh, at least itong general area na. Susundan lang namin yung, yung approach ninyo. Na, Baka gusto nyo na isapin, ito mali. Gusto nga ni ba, brother Armin na kombinasyon ng rural elementary schools at urban. So, we we'll look into that. Information that Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, next to uh, Jackie, let us uh, thank the Senator for her quality time. <laughs> and please let us uh, the Director of the Estate uh, gives a formal thank you to the Senator, Madam Senator Bigger. So, Dr. Sagigit is handing a circus institutional gift uh, with the Chancellor as a Philippine representative to the Governing Board of Circa as well. Um, an appreciation uh, certificate. And after this also is the growth monument of Circa. So this is the growth mo monument found in front of the Circa headquarters. Uh, it shows 11 stylized human figures linked together and standing on a square base. The sculpture depicts synergy amidst the diversity of Southeast Asian countries as they work for the region's well-being. And likewise, we would like to give the Senator uh, knowledge products, knowledge resources from Circa.